Hello. Alex Agut and Rafa Jimenez Sabine had a history of working together before they developed their Bitcoin SV wallet, Handcash. Part of their strength as a team is that they're not just Bitcoiners, as Alex puts it. When I met them at the recent CoinGeek conference in Toronto, I asked them about their partnership, and they told me how they ruthlessly act on customer feedback in their product design. It turns out that Handcash began with a futuristic idea for mobile phones that they'd seen on Black Mirror. Rafa managed to develop it in real life, and then tweaked the idea into a Bitcoin wallet. And the rest is history. You're listening to CoinGeek Conversations with Charles Miller. A few years ago, I posted a message on Facebook that I needed a developer for, for, you know, for creating a startup that I had an idea with. And Rafa appeared with one of his friends and we started the company together and we have had a few startups and companies and products together since uh, for a few years. And now we are here working on Bitcoin. And you were, you were a developer, Rafa? Yeah. Uh, yeah my, my background is I've been working in different kind of industries, like artificial intelligence, uh, developing every kind of apps for Android, for iOS, for desktop, also for web. You've worked for big companies as well as startups then? Yeah, mostly in startups, yeah. but also in consulting. We've been working also together in Accenture in artificial okay. intelligence. And I think this is one of the things that makes the difference, how Hankas is different because our vision is not, we are not like Bitcoiners. Yeah. So you'd already worked together on different startups. Uh, how did you get involved in Bitcoin then? Well, we were very curious about maybe integrating Bitcoin in one of our earlier startups. And, but we thought that it was too complicated to even bother about it and because also there, there wasn't many adoption at all. So we just tried to, we, wait, we waited a couple of years until, you know, we, we were working in, in Accenture, leading the AI department. Uh, but, you know, we, we have always been very used to the startup, uh, the, to working 24 hours a day in a, in a startup. So having a nine to a nine to five job was kind of it was not that it was boring, but we needed more action. So we started. So we kind of revisited Bitcoin in the summer of two thousand and seventeen when we moved to uh, moved to Madrid. And, and where, where where did you move from? Uh, from Valencia. Oh, I see. Well, it's from the region of Valencia. Right? Yeah. We just moved to Madrid and we started looking at Bitcoin and saw that, well, they say that this is electronic cash, but it doesn't work like cash at all. It looks like a very complicated banking app or something for developers, super complicated. So we, we thought, why cannot we create a great product that's, you know, it's focused on, on sending money in, by NFC? Because we are already have a problem. NFC? NFC is contactless payments. You know, oh, we yes. approach yeah. your phones. Right. So our first idea was just, uh, can we, uh, th this was the hypothesis, can we create a great user experience by transferring Bitcoin by approaching your phones so it works like electronic cash? And we developed a quick, uh, a quick uh, mock-up. The mock-up then led to a first prototype, an MVP. But, and it worked great, and we started showing it everywhere on Reddit and Twitter, and now we're here. Creating a prototype like that sounds incredibly difficult. How, how difficult was it? There's... We need to go back to the, one of the products that we were working before, because we saw in one of the Black Netflix Mirror. originals called uh, Black Mirror, mm -hmm. and in one of these episodes, there was... because they are, they used to be futuristic and there was like a um, swipe contact app so people just by approaching the phones they could swap their contact information mm. and it was just a really cool concept that we saw and we tried to replicate so we already had the technology to let's say swap information using NFC and we just had to replace information with addresses but so you saw something. You saw something on Black Mirror, yeah. and then you managed to invent it. Yes. What well, was it, how, that? Sounds like it would be difficult anyway. I think the secret ingredient with this and why we can accomplish these kind of things, just being um, a couple of guys from Spain, <laughs> is 
is that uh, we are very focus driven and we we don't want to do too much. We just want to, it's not because we're lazy, which we are not, but we try to, okay. <laughs> but we try to focus on one problem at a time yeah. and we try to create, where's the value proposition on this? Okay. And just try to make that value proposition work and the rest is accessory. So we can maybe in two or three days focus on just one feature and create a pro one problem that just has one feature to demonstrate uh, if we are right or not with our hypothesis and then maybe we can iterate um, on that. So you created a way to transfer contacts between two people. I mean, that could have been a product in itself. Then. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know why we finally didn't release this yeah. app. I don't know. It was ready to launch and we just didn't, I don't know. Yeah, it's just more because it's the talent of... That's one multi-billion multi company <laughs> that you could have created. <laughs> we have had many many of them like you know like the the pokemon radar it was um, that was amazing that was a huge success this is that we got shut down by by google ultimately oh but, yeah, but it was fun it was our four four or five days of development we designed the whole thing marketed okay. i yeah i run the pr stuff and contacted and, and what was teams. it exactly huh? what was it and it was a um, when when they released pokemon go this game that yeah. they were catching pokemon on the streets uh, the problem was that you had to just wander around the city to find the Pokemon that you wanted. Yes. So what we did is that as Pokemon were uh, spawning in a random fashion, we created an app that was looking for Pokemon uh, while, the, while you were not looking at the phone. And you kind of selected which Pokemon do you want to be alerted when they appear nearby. So they, uh, they alerted you with enough time to go to that place and they show you in the map, in Google Maps, they show you where, where to go. So you could, you could see Pokemons rem that were some distance from the phone that yeah. most people wouldn't normally be able to see. Exactly, exactly, and people loved it. And with that project, one of the things that we learned is how powerful PR is. And, and, and if you create a great product that people love, they're going to recommend it. But, but then, so what went wrong with that? Google. Uh, yeah, because we relied on another company that was kind of hacking their Google services uh, servers to to get the, this information oh, because it wasn't publicly uh, available. Yeah. And we just said like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll try, let's see if, if they allow it or so. But we got a few, you know, seasonal NPCs letters from, <laughs> from Google. But anyway, right. it, it wasn't really your fault. Very, very polite people, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it was worth it and, and we, we had a lot of fun during those days. And it was a great challenge and we learned a lot in those. I mean, when you are like 24 hours uh, a day, five days straight working on something, and it, it, I think it wor it always worked because we uh, working together it, it has always worked because I, I have always been kind of the, the business guy. He's always been this kind of very methodical uh, developer and we learn from each other both mm. things and we are very interested right now in, in branding and marketing and I think it works because we understand and respect each other and also we are complementary. We are not trying to do the same thing. Right, so, so just going back into the story then, yeah. the, po the, po the Pokemon Go thing yeah. also taught you about the what you can do with mobile phones yeah. in terms of their relation to the environment they were in and so on. Yeah. And, and so, so, then, so then along comes Bitcoin, and what did you think about that? We thought that it was a fantastic te technology, but the, it, it was, you know, what people were using, it was the raw material. It's like, yeah, it's like trying to, it's like if you wanted to push for aluminum adoption, and people are not going to buy aluminum in chunks. Aluminum is great for what you can do with it, but people are not going to buy aluminum. So I, I think we needed this tertiary um, sector in Bitcoin. We needed to create polished products and create great experiences. And we can, I, I mean, we don't hate legacy addresses or QR codes or whatever, but I think those are things that have to remain at the development side and the users don't even have to worry about that. Right. So how did you tackle getting hand cash going? We were focused on, like what we detected that were the three pains in the in the Bitcoin ecosystem. I think it was the backups. Yeah. 
how you can send online using addresses because we don't like addresses and the other thing is how we can improve the in-person payments mm. so like trying to um, release something that can solve these three pains and with solutions that we thought at the time that were valid so the idea is let's try to work on something very quickly release it to the market see if it's adopted or not because you know when you have an idea it's just an idea and maybe it sounds really good yeah. in your mind but so we just try to focus on these three things we also were uh, full-time working on a different company so you know and so how long did that take Oof. so Four or five months like until four we months. release the, the, the first hmm. beta. Because the thing that makes makes me wonder is, if you if you produce an app that's a game or something and people can download it and it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. But here we're talking about money, exactly. and that must make it a lot more stressful. And it is. how did how did that's, that how did that impact you? That's why the first release was on testnet. Yeah. So the, which is the, which is the sort of parallel Bitcoin yeah, it's like network the, that yeah is, Bitcoin has like different networks yes they work the same but the value of the coins in the test net is like zero it just makes it's fake money fake money right yeah. 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 I think money, yeah. think it is the same but yeah. it doesn't have right so in a way that's value. good because it does give you an environment where you can make sure it's everything exactly. is working so you can test all the features and and all the the hypotheses that you have and you just launch a product and see if people know how to interact with it if they respond well to the features and one example of this is that we have we, we thought this was the coolest thing that Handcash had, but it seems like uh, users didn't find it valuable for some reason. It was that you could actually create uh, backups of your wallet inside NFC tags. And that's awesome because I, I, I still have my backup on a, on a shelf in a, in a sticker. And I mean, I only need to approach my phone and I recover my, my, my wallet. That's much more simpler than the words and all that stuff, but nobody wanted to use it. I don't know why, but they did. maybe we didn't use the right words. Maybe we didn't use the right format. Maybe they, people didn't have, I don't know. I mean, technology is only half of the story. Exactly. It's a, in the end, we only want to, to use what people find it valuable. And, and you know, value is subjective. So you released the first product. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that we were the first to release a Bitcoin wallet that didn't have confirmations. Didn't, sh didn't display the confirmations. And now nobody displays the confirmations anymore. And we did the same with the handles. And I think at least, I don't know if we are the, perceived by people the, the best product of Bitcoin or whatever, or the best wallet, I don't know. But what I'm very satisfied for is that our users keep using our app and recommend it. And also that I, I think that we are still, uh, at least we are inspiring others in this community to, to, to make a strong push for having a great user experience. Because in the end, we are not developing this for Bitcoin's sake. We are developing this for, for, for people. Uh, there, there's a sort of funny thing that goes on on Twitter in relation to hand cash, which is that when somebody gets a wallet for the first time, yeah. uh, they put on Twitter, please send some money to this person so to encourage them. Yeah. That's quite a nice little marketing e nice. exercise, isn't it? It's beautiful. But, but that is PR. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's yeah. Because it's not something, it's not even something that we try to incentivize in the community. It just happens. It yeah. they, they just like it, and that's what's special and magic. And, and do the, 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 maybe you don't know the answer to this, but do the people who, whose hand cash handle is, are advertised in that way, do they get money? They get, and they get a lot of money, and they, that makes them very, you know... Happy. They, ha <laughs> not just happy, but that, that creates a bond. Yes. That, that, exp that first experience creates a, a bond with our brand. Yes. And everyone in, this, in our community you know, they're very friendly with each other mm -hmm. and we have this kind of very good vibe with our users. Yes. 
And that what that's what ultimately made us realize that our slogan is the Bitcoin wallet you can recommend. Because people feel feel that we are creating this tool that makes them you know, that gives them this superpower. Like they can recommend something great yeah. about Bitcoin that, that their mothers or you or friends can use. And that's we're empowering them. It's not it's not about us. It's not about hand cash or our success. Mm. It's about how how can we empower them to to be you know to be happy about trying to share something which they they uh, love. It's a great thing to have that feeling amongst your customers. It's awesome. When you get much bigger, that is the kind of thing that tends to get lost, isn't it? It happens in the company lose the essence of what they are yeah. it was the mission in the world and yeah. this is what because sometimes we have talked about this is that people not always is buying your product or your service maybe it's, it's the why the what's behind this product what's your goal what's your vision what's your yes. where are your values yeah. so this kind of thing because i think maybe for google it doesn't exist anymore but but for just for for Tesla or Apple, Apple. Mm. so we think, yeah, we those are the kind of, I mean, those are the two companies that we want to to be like. We would like to be the the, the Tesla of money. Yeah, I know it's ambitious, but it's what we feel like. Well, those are those are both companies that actually sell you physical goods. Mm -hmm. Whereas, aren't you in a way more like Google, where you sell something which is intangible? The comparison with Tesla, for instance, is first of all because they are a vertical. Everything, everything oh, they see. deal is like let's say a closed ecosystem, mm. so they can mm. control everything that yeah. is happening. And the second thing is that they are proving that, or their goal is not to create the best electric car, but the best car. You, and because it is electric, exactly. because they believe in that. So exactly. we want to create the world's best money be, uh, with Bitcoin, not because it is Bitcoin, but um, I mean, not the, the why is not trying to create the best Bitcoin product. The goal is to create the best money product, but it just happens that the best choice for that is Bitcoin. Do you think that if everything goes well in five or ten years time, hand cash will be a very big company with hundreds of staff. I I hope so, and I think so because um, I think our our goal is not the products by itself. I mean, you can always iterate your products or change your products if if maybe they don't you don't get the market fit the right market fit. But I think we have the the vision, and we are one of the few that understand. What is uh, being a startup and not finding the right tools to, you know, to monetize early? Bitcoin is a great tool for startups and any small company to start monetizing fast, and 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 that's one of the things that are missing in this in, in this in, in the world. There's no easy way to do it to do it, and I think the only way to do it right now is with Bitcoin. For monetizing a site where you are maybe charging one cent, five cents, ten cents. Three cents, or integrating micropayments in a game. So you can just imagine that you can create with with Bitcoin. You can create an economy inside an economy. Imagine a virtual reality game where you are a kind of like Age of Empires. I don't know if you are familiar with that game. So maybe imagine a, a massive multiplayer online game that's uh, based on Age of Empires, but every player is uh, every every character is one player, one person. And imagine that my mother can, for example, be earning real money by chopping virtual wood and selling this inside the game to another guy. And that guy creates a, a sword or whatever and sells it to. So, I mean, with Bitcoin, you can create this kind of real player, real player one, um, virtual worlds and economies. And that's what we are, that's our focus is on trying to create the reality. That's super exciting. Now you have the capability to stream money. And that's uh, that's a very tricky uh, concept to, to work, work wrap your, your brain around that. But you can basically with Bitcoin stream money, and that's awesome. And do you think that the hardest part will be 
organizing the sort of money and the legal and the regulatory part of it. I think we have to work together with government because when we have new technologies or new businesses, mm. there's no regulation because mm. no one has ever thought of yeah. how things should be, you know. So I think we have many examples of, of this. For me, it's Airbnb, Uber, yeah. all these new economy with new businesses and new things and they have to work together with governments to find the balance between the society, the economy, you know, all these things. And I, I, and I also I do think that our biggest challenge comes from the regulatory part. I mean, I will just obey any law that comes in and we will try to work with the regulators to get a, the, the most favorable law possible and we will try to work in advance before it's imposed in imposed to us, I think we can get some input on why do we need certain regulations to, to be to be in or certain regulations might be hurting the ego space. So I think we, uh, we I think we can have an input on that. But I think our biggest uh, the biggest challenge I think is making the right business deals and finding the right niches and you know because you can be be working very hard towards something and and just not with the right companies or not in the right sector or in the right niche. And if somebody's listening to this, what kind of a business would you like to hear from who would like to work with you? Oh, we have many on this. Well, any video game, startup or social app, you yeah. can integrate micropayments and yeah. Steam or Origin, one of these game portals, or Xbox, uh, Xbox uh, the Xbox division, the, well, anyway, the Microsoft, yeah. Xbox, yeah. or... And w w when something like Xbox wants to work with you, do they have, I mean, w would that require some special deal, or is there any way that they can just sort of use your service because it's out there? Yeah, it's like part of, it's, we have a product that is Casper, that is this API that other businesses can use to integrate micropayments. Mm -hmm. They don't have to care about Bitcoin yeah. because right. we provide the abstraction to just send money from one person to another person. It's like the proposal is yeah. providing a pain solutions with very low fees that enables the micropayments and make them possible. So you might just switch on one morning and discover that some big company is using your services. I hope so. Someday, someday it will happen. <laughs> and we will we will try our best. I mean, we 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 have this vision of where we want to go and where where do we want to get. But what we are not married is the how how to get there. I mean, if we find find that one of our business models is wrong or a product is not you know we don't get market fit for one of our products, we can always change uh, you know the approach or something. But the goal has to be the same and have the same culture company um, and you know having the same ideas and principles and I think that's something that I'm very faithful that, that it will lead us to create something pretty big with handles. Great, fantastic. Thank you both very much thank indeed. Thank you. It's really thank interesting. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much to Alex and Rafa from Handcash, and apologies for the sound quality on our interview. Unfortunately, I had a problem with my audio recorder. By the way, if you're only listening to this as a podcast, you can also watch the video on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can also just listen on your bike or in the car, perhaps, by subscribing to CoinGeek Conversations from your podcast provider. Thanks and goodbye till next week.